Hi there, my name's Gary. I'm a graphic designer and illustrator from the UK. I've been using Affinity Designer and the other Affinity apps for nearly three years now. I've recently been creating a lot of vector brushes that I've got for sale on my Etsy store. But I had someone ask me if I could create a rivet brush. Um, I replied back to them um, and I th after thinking about it, I don't think you really need to create a vector brush to create rivets. Um, you can simply do it by using the stroke tool, um, which I'll show you, and then going through the effects options and adding images in and things like that. So I've obviously put together this cover image, um, but I'm going to turn that off and we're going to start from scratch here. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up with the basic shapes that I think, or lines and images that you'd use for rivets. So you're going to have a straight line, uh, you're most likely going to have a, a circle and possibly a square of rounded corners. So I'm going to bring all of those shapes in. I'm then going to select all three of those shapes and making sure that I go into my stroke tab, I'm going to change it to this dash line tool, which is the third one along. So you're currently in on the second one, you need to change it to the dash line tool. As you can see, you'll come up with all these dashes. Best thing to do would be to change the first option here down to zero, that gives us circles, and for the moment I'm going to keep it on two on the second option. And then I'm going to bring it up to sort of a nice divot, uh, yeah, um, rivet size. We may end up with the issue of having some that are a little bit too close together. You can actually play around with this second option here individually. So if I click on this one, and if we maybe try 2.5, that's too far apart. And I think that sort of works quite well, but it's about probably playing around with that until you get all of them. I'm going to select all three of those again. I'm going to go to swatches. Obviously, I've been playing around with this bit already, so I've got lots of little grey colours up here. I'm just going to select to sort of mid grey and turn it to the turn my uh, my stroke to that colour. I'm going to go to the effects tools and I'm going to immediately just click on this cog. If you click, click down on something like outer shadow, you'll get a cog. Click on the cog, bring that up. So I do want outer shadow. I'm going to select that and I'm just going to offset that just a little bit. Push the darkness up, push the radius up. I'm going to add a little bit of inner shadow. Uh, just a little bit, just like that, I think. And then I think the, the one that's really going to make this work is the bevel and emboss. So I'm going to grab this little dot here and bring it a lot closer to the center. I'm going to change it from pillow to inner. And then I'm going to push the radius up until we get a nice little sort of highlight in the middle. Okay. And again, we can play with, with how bright that is by adjusting brightness there and how much of a shadow we have on the other side. So we've got all those other options there. You can uh, possibly put an outline on it. I think there's a lot of options that you can play around with to make it look more like a rivet. Just gonna move that out of the way for a second. I'm gonna go back into my color tab up here and where it says opacity. I think one option that would really quite simply make this work is just to push it up and add some noise to it. And you can see already, I think we've got something that's looking a lot like like rivets. I'm going to close that for a second. I'm going to go to my swatches. I'm going to select. We have them all selected. As you can see, the background here goes from sort of darker to lighter. So what we could do is we could also go to the fill tool, change it from fill to stroke, and bring that over. Obviously, it's going to darker. So we click on the second dot, and we make it something much lighter. And you're starting to get something like like rivets, I believe. If I group all three of these layers, I could add more effects. So I think back to the outer shadow, I want it going the other way, offset and add a bit of radius to look like it's pushing into the metal as well. And I think pretty quickly we've got something that looks a lot like rivets. Um, there are other options that we can play around with. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on one of these and I'm going to go edit, copy. Uh, this is the third time I'm doing this because it keeps going wrong. 
then I'm going to select all three of these if it's going to let me which for some reason it's not there we go so select all three of those and I'm going to go layer expand stroke so now they are it's not a it's not a line anymore they are all shapes and I'm going to combine them into one shape I'm going to take my image from down here and I'm going to copy and paste that then I'm going to drop that inside that shape there and again already you can see that it's now brought in the texture from that image now I'm going to offset that so that it doesn't quite look exactly the same and then we'll go back to the curves back to the effects and just start bringing them back in again okay so back in that the radius is way too high on outer shadow and there we go inner shadow for some reason it's pushed everything way up so I'm just going to bring that right back down and then again my bevel and emboss bring that right back down and there we go I think we've created something that looks a lot like rivets uh, if you like if you have any questions then please post them below and uh, yeah I'm happy to help thanks very much